This year, the Democrats are holding their convention in Charlotte, North Carolina, which is a drag for lots of Democrats since Democrats tend to support union rights and there is not a single union hotel in all of Charlotte. Who thought that one up? Uh, Republicans this year are holding their convention in Tampa, Florida, which is a drag for lots of Republicans because Tampa is the strip club capital of America and Republicans and strip, well, you know, actually, I don't know, maybe that's a plus for them. Tampa, I should note, is also the death metal capital of America. Tampa gave the world bands like Morbid Angel and Deicide and Obituary. So that's got to be a plus for some Republicans going to the convention, uh, but probably not all of them. The last time around, though, in 2008, it ended up being really important where the Republicans chose to put their convention. The Republicans in 2008 put their convention in St. Paul, Minnesota, remember? And that ended up being really important because St. Paul is one of two twin cities. St. Paul and Minneapolis are two cities that butt right up against each other, separated only by the Mississippi River. And that was really handy in 2008 because while the official Republican convention was going on in St. Paul... Republicans that year also held a shadow convention at the same time in the other twin in Minneapolis. And it was like a real convention, red, white, and blue, ticker tape, a capacity crowd of adoring fans for the politician. They were all there to see. It even had the obligatory rock song from a rock star, in this case Tom Petty, who took legal action to try to stop conservative politicians from using his music. The Republican shadow convention in 2008 held across the river from the real deal was, of course, a Ron Paul extravaganza. The Ron Paul shadow convention ended up being so big that they had to move it from its first venue into a bigger venue. I understand there's another meeting in a nearby town going on. Let, let us be respectful. We have also noticed that those in the, in, uh, in the establishment aren't very anxious to welcome us in. What am I doing this for? What's the purpose of all this? And uh, in many ways, it is to send a message. The Ron Paul Shadow Convention across the river from the RNC in 2008 was a huge hullabaloo, a huge crowd. Everybody paid $17.76 to get in. Uh, they made a ton of noise. Ron Paul said, as you heard there, they were there to send a message. But ultimately, what was the message? I mean, it was kind of a lot of sound and fury signifying mostly nothing because they did not have anything to do. I mean, ultimately, the real Republican deal was across town with John McCain and Sarah Palin. And none of those 10,000 Ron Paul fans in Minneapolis had anything to work on, anything to get done there, no matter how excited they were. Well, this year, the Ron Paul campaign has not planned a shadow convention. They are doing a pre-convention rally ahead of the real Republican convention in Tampa. But that's it. And maybe there is a reason that the Ron Paul campaign has not planned a parallel, we don't care you're holding a convention nearby blowout. Maybe it's because this year at the Republican convention, at the real Republican convention, Ron Paul supporters might actually have something to do. Quite a lot of the Ron Paul folks who are going to this pre-convention rally in Tampa the day before the convention, quite a lot of them are going to be in Tampa anyway because they are delegates to the Republican National Convention. And depending on what happens this upcoming weekend, this coming Saturday, those delegates at the real convention who are Ron Paul supporters could really, really change what is supposed to happen at the Mitt Romney convention. If Ron Paul gets the most delegates at Nebraska's state Republican convention this weekend, that, make, that would make Nebraska the, the fifth state in which Ron Paul has accomplished that goal, getting the plurality of delegates. The Republican Party rules say that means Ron Paul would get to put his name forward at the convention. You know, in terms of whether or not he should be the nominee for president from the Republican Party. That would mean, among other things, that Ron Paul would be guaranteed a speaking slot of 15 minutes before the first round of balloting at the convention. That means Republicans don't just get to coronate Mitt Romney as the uncontested nominee. That means there are dueling nominations and a contested vote. And did I mention there are a whole bunch of Ron Paul supporting official delegates who are going to that convention? How do you think the prospect of that happening is going over with the Republican Party bigwigs and the Mitt Romney folks? If you guess that they are now approaching freakout status and are going to rather extreme lengths to try to stop this increasingly likely outburst of inconvenient democracy in their midst, you would be right. We've got an exclusive on that next. It is from Mitt Romney's home court of Massachusetts, and it is a very, very weird story. That's next. 
My name is Evan Kenny. I'm from Wakefield. I'm, uh, I'm a newcomer to the Republican Party at 18 years old. You know, it, it's going to be tough to follow up to, to Mr. Baker's speech. You know, I Had I been a voting age, I certainly would have supported you, Mr. Baker. I, I, uh... <laughs> Evan Kenny was a high school senior, and as you heard him say, they're a newcomer to the Republican Party when he spoke at his regional Republican Party caucus in Massachusetts back in April. He was trying to get a spot as an alternate delegate to the Republican National Convention in Tampa in August. Now, the man he had to follow in terms of giving a speech, the Mr. Baker he was saying he would have voted for had he been old enough to vote, Mr. Baker is Charles Baker, the Republican Party's most recent nominee for governor in Massachusetts. Mr. Baker ran against Democrat Duvall Patrick in 2010, and he lost. Incidentally, Mr. Baker also lost that day in April, where you just saw tape at that caucus. Charlie Baker lost his bid to be an alternate delegate to the Republican convention in August, and the person he lost to was that high school kid who could not vote for him in 2010 on account of him only being 16 years old at the time. When Massachusetts Republicans got together in April to pick delegates to the National Convention, I think the idea was to quickly and quietly and painlessly elect a bunch of Republican bigwigs to go to Tampa in August to enthusiastically vote for home state Mitt Romney as the party's nominee for president. But that is not at all what happened. For starters, there was Evan Kenny, this high school kid who beat the party's last nominee for governor for one of the alternate spots in the delegation. Young Mr. Kenny and a handful of like-minded supporters of Ron Paul also beat out leading Republican Party lights like Carrie Healy, who was Mitt Romney's lieutenant governor. She was also the Republican nominee for governor in Massachusetts in 2006. She lost to Deval Patrick the first time before Charles Baker got his chance to lose to Deval Patrick the second time. The current Republican leader in the Massachusetts House of Representatives, uh, he lost that day, too. Also, the longtime sheriff of Essex County in Massachusetts, he lost as well. This is Mitt Romney's home state, and all these big-name Republican elected officials couldn't even win places on the state delegation to go nominate him. He was the Republican governor of Massachusetts, and the next two people who tried to be the Republican governors of Massachusetts after him, sorry, you didn't make the cut. There's a high school senior who's got more support than you. The whole ordeal was very embarrassing for the Romney campaign. They had chosen a nice slate of Romney-supporting delegates who they thought would get, you know, an official rubber stamp approval at the state caucuses, and then they'd go on to support him at the convention. No muss, no fuss. But these caucuses turned out not to be a rubber stamp approval kind of deal. After the caucuses in April, the Boston Globe reported less than half of the delegates that the Romney campaign had chosen actually won their spots on the delegation. The people who won instead were... In large part, Ron Paul supporters, enthusiastic high school kid and all. And that is when things got messy. The party declared out of the blue in a way they never had before and in a way that is never mentioned in their rules that all the officially selected delegates from Massachusetts this year would have to sign this affidavit. They would have to swear under the pain and penalty of perjury that they would vote for Mitt Romney at the Republican convention in August. Now, some of the Ron Paul fans among the newly elected delegates balked at the affidavit. I mean, what if something, it's, and, it's, and it's reasonable, I mean, what if something happens between now and the convention, something unforeseen, Romney gets his name pulled for some reason that nobody can foresee now, right? Massachusetts would have these guys legally bound to vote for him no matter what? That doesn't even make sense. The delegates proposed an alternate pledge that was a little less specific. They changed it so it would pledge them to follow the party rules, not to follow Mitt Romney as a named person. Apparently, the alternate affidavit was not good enough. And the state party threw these guys out. Even the ones who did turn in the state party affidavit were told they were out. They didn't sign it quickly enough. 18-year-old Evan Kenny and 16 other officially elected delegates were disqualified by the state Republican Party, even though they won fair and square. They were disqualified as delegates for failing to deliver the I pledge myself to Mitt Romney affidavit uh, or for delivering it too late. So their own rules, their own duly conducted election be darned. The Republican Party has come up with a whole new rule after the fact to keep the Ron Paul supporting rebel out. And when they kicked out Evan Kenny, the enthusiastic high school kid, wouldn't you know it, they decided they wanted to give his spot instead to the guy who ran for governor, who Evan Kenny beat fair and square. Joining us now for the interview is Evan Kenny, elected as an alternate delegate for the Massachusetts Republican Party. He's a Ron Paul supporter. Evan, it's great to meet you. Thank you for being it's here. It's an honor to be here. Thank you, Rachel. You wrote an excellent email when we first covered this little scandal, explaining that you were the guy at the center of it all, and I'm grateful for you to, reach, uh, to you for reaching out. Um, 
How did it feel when you won, when you beat out some of these really bold-faced named Republicans in your state at that caucus? Well, let me say, first of all, that Charlie Baker, uh, with the speech that you just showed, uh, when I said that I'm an 18-year-old newcomer to the party, uh, the first hands to clap belonged to Charlie Baker. Mm -hmm. Charlie Baker and Luke Noble, they were both two, two people who were very excited to see this enthusiasm in the party. Um, and Charlie Baker, actually, they, they did try to send Charlie Baker to the convention, but Charlie Baker said, no, absolutely not. I lost. This kid mm. won, you know. So these, he's these not, even won. though they're trying to give him your spot, yeah. he's saying this is not fair. He's being righteous. He's saying no. What was your reaction to being given that legal affidavit saying that you would vote for Mitt Romney under the pain of perjury? You know, I actually, I, I, my reaction was kind of like, well, okay, because I, I didn't know the rules, and I also didn't know that the affidavit had never been done before. Uh, so I was like, well, I plan to do that anyway, and I, I pledged to do that at the caucus, and that's all that's required in the rules. I pledged to do that at the caucus, so I was, I was ready to send it in until someone pointed out to me. Actually, it was my mom. My mom, who's certainly no legal expert, she said, you can't swear under pain and penalty of perjury to do something in the future. It would never hold up in court. I said, you know, you're right. Maybe I should be careful. And, you know, after consulting with the Mass Liberty Caucus, uh, we decided to send in an affidavit that just says, we're going to follow your rules. We're going to follow Mass General Law and the GOP rules which means we're going to vote for Mitt Romney in the first ballot. Mm -hmm. and that, but that was not enough. That was not enough, even if I got it in on time. What was their explanation to you once you did turn in the affidavit that you turned in? What was their explanation for you for why you couldn't go? Well, if, uh, you know, two weeks later, uh, at the uh, state committee meeting on June 12th, I had, I had signed that original affidavit that the state GOP sent me. So that's the third pledge. Um, I gave it directly to the chairman of the committee who kicked me out. And he sent me a letter signed with his name in ink uh, three days later that said, that Romney for President Inc. had just cause and irrefutable evidence that I would not vote for Mitt Romney in the first ballot. But I had a, a legally notarized affidavit, two of them, as well as a verbal pledge. And all that was required was the verbal pledge. So I pledged three times to vote for Mitt Romney. And I'll say it now. I will be happy to represent the voters of Massachusetts and vote for Mitt Romney in the first ballot of the convention. Why That's what you, I ran for. Why, why do you think they're doing this? Like, I mean, not just, I mean, they're giving these legalistic explanations. But what is your sense about, about why they're doing this? I was struck, I'm asking you because you told the Globe you felt that you had been rudely awakened to the realities of politics. Yeah. Does that mean that you think they are doing this for a reason other than why they, what they are saying? Well, maybe. I don't know. But, but I, I will say that, you know, the, the, this is the Republican leadership in the, in the, in the Massachusetts GOP. It's, it, it, they don't represent Richard to say they don't represent Charlie Baker because these people reached out to me and said thank you you know bring, bring the youth movement to right. the Republican Party um, it, these are these are only a few corrupt power brokers in the leadership who want to keep the, the party to themselves they don't care that it's 11 percent voter registration and, and, and shrinking in Massachusetts in the Republican Party they they just want to keep the power to themselves but, you know the, for, forever in terms of the Ron Paul movement uh -huh. and Ron Paul's been around and he's had a lot of different aspects to his career some of which I find uh, some of which I I find repellent, some of which I find incredibly exciting. And in, it, since 2008 in particular, sort of 2007 until now, he really has spoken to young people in a way that other Republican Absolutely. politicians have not. he's 76 years old. He's 76 <laughs> years old. And he talks about it very eloquently, saying, listen, all of these young people are interested in the message. They treat me like a rock star because of what I am talking about, because of the message. So if the Republican Party wants to capitalize on my young voters, why don't you guys look into my message? Why don't you think the Republican Party will do that? I feel like the Republican Party is inexplicably hostile to Ron Paul supporters. Well, the real Republican Party is us. The real Republican Party is me and the 16 other delegates who were removed from their elected positions. And the real Republican Party is Charlie Baker, these people who, who are, are coming out to represent the Republican oath. They're not out to represent George Bush and Rush Limbaugh, right? right? They're out to represent the Republican oath, which holds principles of, of liberty, sound money policy, which is a Ron Paul slogan, um, free enterprise. And even equal rights, Rachel, in the Republican oath, equal rights. I've heard of those. It's yeah. great, exactly, right? And you know, and that's those are real Republican values, and that's why I'm still a Republican. That's why I'm happy to say I'm a Republican because I'm not the Republican that George Bush represents. I'm the Republican that the Republican oath represents. Well, you are uh, you are having to fight tooth and nail to be recognized by mainline Republicans uh, in terms of what you just said, but they ought to be really happy to have you, and I'm happy to have you here. I think so. Thank great you to very meet much, you, Evan. Thanks a lot, man. Good luck to you. Thank you, Evan Kenny, 18 years old. Do you believe it? Elected as an alternate delegate for the Massachusetts Republican Party and obviously a Ron Paul supporter. See, Republicans, it's safe to come here. We can have very constructive discussions. All right, we'll be right back.